He discovered a new species of freshwater turtle uh, named after him, Alisea Irwini. He purchased a property out near St George uh, and the aim of that property, a conservation property, was to look at sustainable farming practices to protect that very delicate brigolo belt in that, that region. He, of course, dedicated millions of dollars and support to global wildlife management and research, wrote a guidebook on how to live with crocodiles, published 15 papers in natural history magazines and journals and herpetological journals. And just recently, as again, as Mick mentioned, he is a named investigator on an Australian Research Council linkage grant. They are very prestigious awards, and I'll mention that just a bit later on. I should say, if, if Steve was sitting here right now, he'd be feeling rather uncomfortable because he'd be saying to me, hey, mate, it's, it's, it's not about me, it's about the animal, or about the animals that we, we share this planet with. And let's, let's start with the animals. And, of course, the animal that he was most famous for and when she got his name Crocodile Hunter, of course, is, is these guys here. In Australia, we have two species of crocodile, the small freshwater crocodile, which is endemic only to Australia, and then a completely different animal, that being the estuarine crocodile. This is the largest of all living reptiles, the largest species of crocodile. Records state that it grows in excess of eight metres, and there's a, a living specimen today that is over seven metres in body length. Now, you're looking at probably close to two tonnes in body mass. And we're lucky enough to have this as one of our iconic animals in Australia. Not only is it the largest of all species of crocodile, it also has the widest distribution, which, which spans from the Solomon Islands, Vanuatu, through Indonesia, Borneo, up to the Philippines, across into to Malaysia, and even along the east coast of, of India and Sri Lanka. In Australia, it occurs in the, the northern regions, and it extends far south as the Fitzroy River uh, near Rockhampton. The name estuarine crocodile comes from its habitat, but the name is rather confusing. This is uh, an albatross bay near Weeper, a classic kind of estuarine environment. Not only are they found in estuarine environments, they're also located in tidal river systems, in swamps, and in fresh water, water holes. Not only that, you can also find them in the Great Barrier Reef, sitting on coral caves, and I've never read in the tourist magazines that uh, crocodiles live uh, on the Great Barrier Reef, and I, I wonder why. <laughs> Over the last five, six years, we've been really dedicating our efforts towards understanding more about crocodiles. And our overall aims of our research is really to understand, to obtain a better understanding of their behaviours, their movement patterns above and below the water surface. And in doing so, we want to explore their ecological role in wetlands and rivers and marine ecosystems. And ultimately, this research is there to promote conservation and protection of wild, wild crocodile populations. And that being through effective management and through education, of course, which Australia Zoo is famous for. What has been a delight for me is the partnership that has, has formed between University of Queensland, Australia Zoo and the Queensland Government through Queensland Parks and Wildlife Service. And this has been underpinned by support from the Australian Research Council. They have acknowledged this partnership and have provided support and funding for, for our research. It's appropriate to, to, to mention the team leaders here, Steve being one of them, and Dr Mark Reid, uh, who is the, the, the Chief Crocodile Biologist for Queensland Parks and Wildlife Service. In 2006, we obtained uh, a linkage grant 
which enabled us to, to really go forward with our research. And Steve, being an industry partner, it's quite rare to have an industry partner as a named investigator. And again, it's a credit to him and his, his ability and expertise. So we've been asking the question, how do crocs utilise space through time? We want to track the movements of crocodiles over both large uh, spatial scales, so geographic scales, and over a long period of time. We want to look at their behaviours, and as you'll see, we actually want to see what they're doing in three dimensions, the title of this talk. And laid upon this is looking at a variety of interactions, whether they be biological factors, environmental factors, or in fact the impact of humans on these, these animals. But there are a number of challenges with working on crocodiles. You can see from this photo here, they are highly cryptic. They are quite magical in terms of disappearing into the, into the bush. They are in fact quite wary animals. They are easily disturbed and those re reasons, and they're very shy animals, and for those reasons, they are particularly difficult to work on. You just can't go out there and, and try and work on these animals and, and study them without actually disturbing them. And so we have to use a variety of methods to be able to study them in the natural environment. And we do that through biotelemetry, using remote sensing technology to actually record the measurements or the movements of crocodiles in their natural environment, away from human interference once they're attached, and they can just go about their daily business. And we've been using a variety of methods to accomplish that, using radio telemetry, satellite telemetry, acoustic, so underwater telem telemetry, and archival tags, data loggers where the information is stored on board. And I'll be giving examples of all these types of technology in our, our work, our efforts, in terms of uh, tracking the crocodiles. Our study sites are far north Queensland, so we head up north above Cooktown. We've concentrated a lot of our work at Lakefield National Park, but also on the Nesbitt River, the Wenlock River, and around Weeper. So where to begin? Well, you have to catch the animals to be able to work on them. And that's really where the, the, the team from Australia Zoo came to the fore. And it's a huge effort. There's immense logistics involved in catching a large number of, of large estuarine crocodiles. So massive logistics. You need the expertise and the experience to minimise the risk to yourself. And you have to rely on a team approach. And that is so crucial to this type of research, is forming a tight-knit team, being aware of each other's capabilities and having team leaders. And Steve was, was our leader in the field in terms of catching the, the crocodiles. Scientists, you often think of scientists wearing white lab coats and being in a white stark lab. Well, this is our laboratory. Going into the field, and I must say it's a pretty beautiful uh, laboratory. This is looking northwards over Lakefield National Park, 